Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Export Market Development Grants Program Information Session for T3 applicants in the next round of the program, round four, on how to submit your application online. I'm Nama Gunic. I look after the Export Market Development Grants Program here at Austrade. And today with me is my colleague, Melissa Sokoleski, who is a System Design Manager, who will be delivering this webinar with me. Melissa and I are based in Sydney, and we come to you from the Gadigal land of the Aurora Nation. We respectfully acknowledge um, the traditional owners and custodians of the land of which we meet today and pay our respects to the elders past and present. We recognise the enduring con connection that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have with this land, and we extend our respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples joining us today, acknowledging their rich histories, cultures and contributions. Before we begin, just a quick housekeeping. Uh, your camera and microphone has been turned off um, and uh, it's on for us for our presenting. We will be using Slido at the end of this webinar for any questions and answers. Uh, the hashtag is EMD, hashtag EMDG. Please note that Slido will open a bit later, so we um, ask you to ask those questions in Slido rather than in the WebEx chat, if possible, please. Some of the answers will be um, obviously provided during the presentation if you listen carefully, but we will have some time for Q&A at the end. As I said, this information session is for T3 applicants in the next round of the program. We are recording this webinar today and it will be published um, on the Austria website very shortly. We have, ran, uh, we have actually three other webinars that we will also publish. We ran two webinars yesterday for T1 and representative body applicants and earlier today uh, another webinar for T2 applicants. So this one is only for T3. We'll cover today uh, really briefly eligibility requirements for the T3 applicants, the grant amount and the opening date. We'll uh, talk through some key steps about how to prepare to apply. We'll have a video demonstration of the online portal and Melissa will take you through that. We also spend some time giving you some useful system requirements tips and go through the mandatory attachments to the application form and there will be time uh, for Q&A at the end. We released the grant guidelines for the next round of the program on 13th of August, so uh, well in advance um, uh, of opening the online portal to applications. This is to give you time to understand the changes that are coming through in round four and prepare to apply. We have delivered four public webinars and with today's webinar it will be eight altogether by each tier. And we responded to a high volume of inquiries through the EMDG help desk and continue to do so. We encourage you to read the grant guidelines that are published on the Austria website and on Grant Connect, and also um, review the website content, um, as well as all mandatory templates that we have published to support you to prepare your application. Uh, we have published a sample application form by each tier and exemplar plan to markets for you to reference as you are preparing your strategic high quality plan to markets. Please also review the previous webinars and uh, we have published about 15 or 16 um, ex ex um, explanatory videos on our website to help you um, understand the eligibility requirements by each tier and um, understand what documents you need to um, get ready to, to uh, upload with your application. We use the EMDG update newsletter as the key uh, communication channel for EMDG. Uh, we have about 20,000 subscribers already uh, to this channel and we encourage you to do also uh, subscribe if you haven't already. This is um, where we will update you on any um, opening, obviously, dates and um, later on when we issue grant agreements or so any updates around the program uh, will be updated uh, through this newsletter. As I said, please refer to our website as you are preparing your applications or contact our EMDG help desk for any further inquiries. So let's look into the eligibility conditions for T3 applicants briefly. Um, today's webinar is for system requirements, but we'll just recap for your uh, reference uh, what it actually means to, to be eligible for T3 in round four. So T3 is for applicants that are exporting. Um, so you must be an established exporter and expanding your marketing and promotional activities um, into new key markets. So you must be expanding and making a strategic shift and uh, promoting your products into new export markets uh, that we defined as single economies or single countries. <clears throat> 
you must have a turnover of one million for T3 uh, to apply in T3 in round four. The grant size in this T is minimum 20,000 up to max maximum of 80,000 per financial year. Based on that, we estimate that we will be offering around 650 grants in this year if everyone apply for that maximum per financial year. And again, we'll open to this day at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time on 12th of November, 2024. <clears throat> I mentioned that you must be making the strategic shift to new markets. So that is a major change in round four. If you are an existing grantee in rounds one to three, you would know that we also had a requirement around strategic shift. However, the definition of the strategic shift is changing from round four. It is defined as a change in your business strategy, including operational and or supply chain readiness that supports changing your marketing or promotional activities by targeting a new export market defined as a single economy. From round four, we have identified those key markets in the grant guidelines. So there's an attachment to the grant guidelines where those key markets are listed. There are 27 of those markets that you see uh, on this slide here. This key market must be new to you, must be new to your business, and it must be one of or many of those uh, listed here on this slide. So you cannot be doing mixing existing and new. T3 is ex exclusively for new markets that are listed on this slide here. <coughs> Just before we go into the uh, system requirements and the online application form, just to recap again, the application is still open on the 12th of November at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Austrade will receive and assess applications in the order they are received. So when we open to T3 on the 12th of November, we start assessing applications and allocating grants, and then we'll close the portal once the funding is exhausted in, the, in this year. This is different from the previous rounds where we uh, had an opening period and received applications and then distributed funds accordingly to all eligible applicants. The, uh, the, the way how we will be assessing is different in closing the portal. So please note that even if you submit your application before we close that tier two applications, you may miss out because we may have allocated funding to uh, eligible applicants that are higher on that list of receipt. Funding is limited, so some applicants may miss out. I will now hand over to Mel, who will provide you of an overview for the EMBG. Thank you, Noma. So we will now showcase the video highlighting um, how to submit your online application form via the EMDG online form. The video is a general overview of the form design and how to complete it. It does not go into detail or answering each individual question relevant to the tier you're applying for because every business will respond to each question differently based off the nature of their business operations and activities. The form is simple and intuitive. If you have prepared your answers and have your mandatory documents ready for upload, it should only take you about 30 to 45 minutes to complete. Before we hit play, please ensure you have your volume up. If you have any technical issues in viewing the video from your end of the webinar, we'll provide you the YouTube link in the WebEx chat so you can access it from your own device. Lastly, a video disclaimer. In the video, you will see the online application form from our test environment. This may be slightly different to when you um, go to apply on live um, due to the tweaks in language. This video will demonstrate the EMDG online application form process. Before you start your application form in the portal, you will need to read the Round 4 EMDG grant guidelines, download and familiarise yourself with the sample application form from our website, perhaps even pre-fill your responses in the sample application form where possible so that you can copy and paste them into the online form when it opens. Set up your digital identity and check if you can log into the portal. Prepare the supporting documents that are relevant to the tier you're applying for and 
watch the Get Ready to Apply for EMDG videos available from our website. All businesses and organisations must submit their EMDG application form through the EMDG online portal. The EMDG online portal login page is where you access the application form, see regular updates on the current and previous rounds, and host technical specifications and other relevant information. To access the application form, you need to log into the EMDG online portal by scrolling down to the middle of the page and logging in with your government digital ID. Your digital ID must be connected to the business's ABN that you will be applying for a grant. You can do that through the government's relationship management system, also known as RAN. If you do not have a digital ID, you will not be able to apply. So to get your ID, visit the homepage of the EMDG portal and follow the links to the ATO's registration page. Getting your ID can take some time though. So our advice is to set up your digital ID well in advance of the round opening. To log in, enter your MyGov ID email address, then select Get Code. A four digit code will appear on the login screen. Log into your MyGov ID on your mobile device using your 10 character password fingerprint or face recognition. Enter or accept the four digital code in your MyGov ID app to continue. The EMDG online portal homepage is where you can access Austrade's export readiness test, start your new application form, access prior grant applications, grant agreements and milestone reports. Check the status of your current application, as well as where you'll be able to access your grant agreement and lodge your milestone reports when they become available. The application form is divided into five tabs. Each tab must be completed before moving on to the next one. You do this by clicking on Save and Next at the bottom of each page. We recommend that you save often so that your work is never lost. You can do this by clicking on Save here. You can also save and exit to, if you want to come back to it later. However, this does not hold your place in the queue. Only submitted applications will be assessed in the order that they are received. Questions? that are mandatory have an asterisk. Validations and error messages will appear if questions are not completed correctly or you do not meet any eligibility requirement. Recheck your responses to ensure your application is complete and correct. You can also see which documents you need to upload. You can upload at each tab or you can wait until the end of the form. The choice is yours. Helpful information and guidance is available throughout the form in purple boxes. The eligible applicant tab is the first section of the application form. To start the application, you must read and accept the terms and conditions of use and confidentiality and privacy provisions. Simply click on the hyperlinks to access the information. This tab is divided into three sections. Tier selection and eligibility, applicant business details, applicant business structure. The tier selection and eligibility section of the tab is where you select which tier you are applying for and answer other key eligibility questions up front. The form has been designed to validate if you are eligible to receive a grant under the tier you have selected. It checks your prior grant history to see if you have applied for EMDG before. It also has validations in place 
for other questions. As a tier three applicant, you must select up to 10 markets you intend to promote your eligible products. These markets must be new key markets as outlined in section 14 of the grant guidelines and ones that you have not previously exported to. State your annual turnover and provide us with two years of profit and loss statements and balance sheets. Tell us if you have the minimum capacity to spend up to $20,000 per financial year of your own funds. The applicant business details section has certain fields that are pre-filled from the ABR and ASIC websites. For example, the date of business commencement. It is in this section that you will declare if you are tax compliant and be prompted to provide us with evidence to support your declaration. The applicant business structure section is where you provide us the details of any related companies, name of all company directors and partners, and if you are First Nations organisation. The eligible tier tab has been designed to ask you questions that are specific to the tier that you have selected. It is within this tab that you'll answer a series of questions that will determine if you are eligible for the tier and be prompted to upload supporting documents to prove your eligibility. As a tier three applicant, you must demonstrate that you have not previously exported in the markets you intend to promote to. To demonstrate, you have exported, you need to tell us when your most recent export sale was, upload export evidence and list export sales by market. We only need you to provide your top 10 markets here and they must be different to the key markets that you're intending to, to promote to. You will need to tell us if you're seeking to expand to new markets, if you're making a strategic shift in the marketing of your eligible products, and explain how you have a designated connection to your eligible products. The plan to market and eligible expenses tab requires attention to detail. This tab is divided into three sections, plan to market, eligible expenses, optional questions. The plan to market section is where you provide unique, high quality and specific responses to your business. All questions are mandatory. They must be completed with sufficient detail and must directly relate to your planned export promotional activities. You cannot submit plan to market responses that are copied from another business or submit generic marketing plan responses. If you do, your application will be deemed ineligible. Your responses in the plan to market section can be up to 3000 characters in length or approximately 500 words. If you have pre-prepared your response, you can copy and paste your response in the text box. The planned eligible expenditure table is a mandatory section that must be completed. To do this, select the category or categories that you plan to spend the grant money on and fill in the respective amounts. The total planned eligible expenditure will be automatically calculated in the table as the sum of the amounts you entered for each planned eligible expenditure category. It cannot be more than double the maximum grant amount, that is $160,000 for the tier, 
and cannot be less than $40,000 per financial year. The total grant amount sought is an amount that you enter. You tell us how much you want to receive each financial year. The total grant amount sought per financial year is to be calculated as 50% of your planned eligible expenditure up to the maximum grant amount per tier, that is $80,000, and cannot be less than $20,000 per financial year. You can only receive a grant for eligible expenditure and you must match the total grant amount sought with your own funds. You must provide a copy of your current bank statement and bank account transactions with your application to demonstrate that you have at least $20,000 per financial year of your own funds to match the minimum grant of $20,000 per financial year. Please double check your total grant amount sought and ensure that you can match the grant with your own funds. The table has system validations and error messages will come up if you enter amounts greater than the amounts allowed. You must declare that you have a minimum of $20,000 per financial year to match the minimum grant amount of $20,000. You can match the total grant amount sought with your own funds. You understand that if you spend less than $20,000, you will not receive a grant payment. And you will not spend the grant funding on ineligible expenses. The last section of this tab is the optional questions. Your responses to the following questions are optional. Answering these questions will help Austrade understand your business's overall export readiness as outlined in Austrade's Go Global Toolkit and potentially offer other trade services. Remember to review your responses before you click on Save and Next. To be eligible for a grant, you must have an eligible product. It is in this tab that you select and identify the eligible product you are seeking to export or promote to overseas buyers. You can select multiple categories of eligible products. You'll be asked to provide a comprehensive description. Remembering you can copy and paste your pre-prepared response. Followed by answering a series of questions relevant to your product. If you're promoting goods made outside of Australia, or services other than tourism services, you'll be required to upload the respective submissions. Templates for these submissions can be found on our website, and it is strongly recommended that you prepare and complete these prior to the round opening. The application finalization tab is the final section of the application form. It is in this tab that you provide all supporting documentation if you haven't done so in previous tabs. The bank account details of your business or organisation so we know where to pay your grant. The details of the primary contact person. This person will be responsible for accepting the grant agreement. Your website details or social media channel link. and a declaration that you must read, acknowledge, understand and accept by entering your details. Lastly, you'll be asked to acknowledge that Austrade does not accept incomplete applications and that you have re reviewed your application for completeness. To review your application, simply go back to the first tab and check each of your responses and click Save and Next at the end of each page until you get back to this tab 
where you can click on the submit button. Upon clicking on the submit button, you'll be directed to the application confirmation page. This will confirm that your application has been successfully submitted and you can download a copy of your application form as a PDF from here. Be sure to check your inbox and spam folder for an email that provides you with details on your successful application submission. If you do not receive an email within two hours of submitting your application, please contact EMDG Help immediately. Should you require any technical assistance whilst completing the application, please contact EMDG Help on 132878 or email us at emdg.help at austrade.gov.au. This brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for um, listening and watching. Uh, we'll now recap the mandatory attachments to the application form. You have heard there is a few to, for you to get ready to upload. So Mel, can you take us through uh, yeah, that list? Not a problem. So as per the grant guidelines, 6.4.1 attachments for tier three and the sample application form, there are seven areas that stipulate attachments are required. We'll address these seven documents that are required noting that the plan to market is no longer a separate attachment. It now forms part of the um, actual application form in an individual section, and as you would have seen in the video um, just then. There's also an example document um, available on our website, which provides you with those um, plan to market questions that you can utilise um, so you can prepare your answers as well. To ensure you have the correct number of documents, we'll take you through the requirements now for the eligibility criterion and the number of documents that are required to be uploaded. As you can see, the mandatory attachments for all Tier 3 applicants are as follows. You need to supply us with two years of financial statements. So you've got your profit and loss statements and your balance sheets for the last two financial years, being 2022-23 and 2023-24. So that is two profit and loss statements, one for each financial year, and two balance sheet documents, one for each financial year as well. So that's all up four documents um, that need to be uploaded for this eligibility requirement. The next section is um, providing us evidence with the minimum capacity to spend. What we ask for in this particular section um, is your bank statement, or your latest bank statement that's been provided to you by your financial institution, and a copy of your um, November bank account transactions, okay? So both of these are documents that are provided to you through your um, Australian Financial Banking Institution. The next um, slide goes through the um, tax compliance documents that we require. These are two documents that you need to upload, one for each financial year. So this can range from being a BAS, uh, a BAS statement or your business activity statement, your notice of assessment, or your statement of account, and they must be um, from your last two financial years as well. For T2 and T3, we need evidence for export sales. So one of the requirements is that you must um, already be exporting, and you need to provide us with two export sales invoices. Lastly, these are mandatory attachments. However, they depend on the type of product you're promoting as well as the entity type that you might be. So if you're promoting goods that are made outside of Australia or services other than tourism services, there's two, uh, there's specific, uh, specific um, documents that you need to upload. Templates are available from our Austrade website for these and there's submissions to ensure that you meet the eligibility requirements for um, these two particular um, products that you might be promoting. Lastly, you have your, um, if you're applying as a trust on behalf of your trustees, you need to supply us with all your trustee documents as well. So this here is a document that you need to upload to show us that you um, do have that trustee in place. I'll now just quickly run through the system requirements for you. So. Basically, these requirements allow you to um, allow for your application process to be easier. 
So one of the key things we um, recommend is to make sure that you prepare your mandatory documents to prove your, your um, eligibility. And we've provided those um, documents in the slides before this and will be available um, as well, as I mentioned, on the grant guidelines and the sample application form. The documents will vary by tier, okay? And as I mentioned before, they include things like your bank statements, your balance sheets, profit and loss statements, and so forth. You'll need to attach these documents with your online application form. When we ask for the specific document, you can, you can only upload it as a single file. Or our advice is if you do have multiple pages or um, documents that you want to put together, that you merge those documents into a single file and that document must be a PDF. Okay, we won't accept any screenshots. They must be PDF documents that get uploaded. The system won't actually accept anything else other than PDF. The file size must be less than 10 megabytes in file size as well for that single document. It's also important that you have a stable internet connection. Okay, so make sure your Wi-Fi um, or you've got high quality data connection when completing your application form to avoid any disruptions. We also recommend that you use a desktop computer and not a mobile device. Make sure your internet browsers such as Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge are up to date and for better visibility of the application form as well as better experience in using the form when recommend that your minimum screen resolution is 1,280 by 800. As you would have seen on the video, the online portal will have a table, which you can also see here on this screen. And it will be updated throughout the day as the application, or the round I should say, opens. The table will highlight the percentage of funds that have been allocated by tier and provide a status. Once funding has been exhausted for the particular tier, the portal will close and this will be shown on the table. Thank you so much, Mel. So this brings us to the section on uh, questions and answers. So we will allow some time for people to start posting their questions in Slido, hashtag EMDG. Um, and while we're waiting for that, maybe we can answer some frequently asked questions from previous webinars and uh, inquiry line. One of them is MyGov ID. Do I need to have a MyGov ID? How do I set it up, uh, et cetera? So maybe Mel, you could yeah. um, answer um, that one. So you do need a MyGov ID um, or a digital identity um, to be able to apply. To set that up, you need to visit the um, ATO website and that provides you all the details. There's a link on our online portal um, login page that directs you through to the way that you need to set that particular um, ID up. We, as the video mentioned, we recommend that this is set up way in advance of you um, applying because it can take several days for it to be organised um, should you face any issues. Um, so, yeah, be sure to um, try and test it out. If you've got your ID already, um, jump onto the online portal, pop in your email address, use the MyGov ID app, on your mobile device and log in and have a look. You know, check your grants history as well, which is available on the online portal too. Thank you, Mel. Also important to know that Austria cannot help you set up the MyGov ID. That is owned by the Australian Taxation Office. They own that product and the platform. So please contact them uh, how to set it up or if you have any, have any questions around that. But you must have it to um, submit your application online. And while we are at ATO, um, just the, another question that we've been getting um, around tax compliance. So uh, that is also uh, a responsibility of the Australian Taxation Office. Um, as a, a business in Australia or a grant applicant, you must be a tax compliant. So for any uh, advice around what makes you tax compliant and uh, what sort of evidence you need to um, access uh, to be able to upload the application form, uh, please contact the ATO. ATO advises us that we can ask you for uh, business activity statements, notice of assessment or statement of the account, but um, if, there, if you have a specific uh, arrangement or a different document that you receive from the ATO to confirm your tax compliance, please ask them and then upload that document with your application form. Please redact your uh, tax uh, file number. Uh, and if you don't do that, we will do this at the, our end in our system so it's not um, saved on file uh, because that's personal information. 
Um, so thank you for that. We'll now open for slider questions and over to Rachel. Thank you, Emma. Um, just a reminder to you, Slido, for all your questions. We've got some great questions coming through, so thank you for all of those. Um, the first question is, if an applicant has a turnover of $19 million in financial year 24, but then their turnover increases to $21 million in the financial year 26, does this disqualify them from the grant at the point of the milestone report? So the, the turnover requirements are assessed at the time of your application and we're asking you for evidence of your turnover in 23-24 in the most recent uh, finalised uh, income year. So we will not be penalising you if that threshold goes over uh, 20 million during your grant agreement term if you're successful. Thank you. Um, there's a question here. I've noticed a required supporting document listed as memorandum of incorporation, articles of association or constitution. Could you clarify what this document entails and if it's absolutely necessary? So that's not applicable for tier three applicants. That only applies to representative bodies. So if you're a tier three, please disregard that. Um, however, if it's um, a representative body, it's required there. Mm. Thanks, Mel. Um, there's a, a couple of questions here regarding the bank account and bank transaction uh, requirements. Um, could you just clarify the two different documents that are required and the timeframes for each of those documents, please? Mm. So with uh, round four application, you know, we're, we're asking you to uh, demonstrate minimum capacity to spend. So as a T3 applicant, you must be demonstrating that by providing us uh, with a bank statement from your bank uh, from um, 23, uh, from the, I guess, the current year, uh, 24. We do recognise that some banks uh, issue uh, bank statements on a six monthly or quarterly or monthly basis. So we're asking you to provide a copy of that official statement from your bank uh, from any time during this calendar year and then the transaction history from November. So there are two mandatory documents that you need to upload. The application form will ask you for that and Mel can explain how you need to label them. So um, when you go to um, upload your supporting documentation um, on the actual online application form, you need to uniquely name each individual file that you're being requested to upload. So what this means is your documents need to have a different name. So say, for example, with this bank account um, question that's come through, you've got your bank account, um, your, your bank account transaction history, label it as simply November account, bank account transaction history. And then your other document being your bank statement, label it as your bank statement and put the period in there as well. Um, so every document, as I mentioned before, needs to be uniquely um, named because what will happen is if your documents are all named the same in the application form, it will actually stop you from um, uploading it into the form. <coughs> Thank you, Mel. Thank you. Are there any specific instructions if you are eligible and applying for only one year of the grant? So um, as you're preparing to apply and you receive the MDG before, you must check your grant history to see how many grants you received in the past uh, from under that eight-year limit. So if you only got one year left, you can apply for one year in round four. And what will um, actually occur in that planned expenditure table, you will be um, given those two columns for 25, 26 and 26, 27. However, it won't actually let you um, put in an amount for both columns, it will stop mm. you. And what you need to do is simply put zero in the column that you do not want funding for. So mm. that financial period that you do not want funding for, mm. simply put a zero. And even if you just want to apply for one grant year, uh, one grant period, activity period, simply just put zero in that um, column that you yeah. don't want funding for. And just to add to that, round four is opening for, uh, for grant period in 25, 26 and 26, 27. Uh, thank you. Uh, there's a question regarding is the start new application tab unable to be clicked on at this stage? That is correct. It's not open yet. We will open to this day at 10 a.m. Australia Eastern Daylight Saving Time on the 12th of November. Thank you. Are new markets the countries we have never sold to or advertising or done marketing activities to? Those new markets must be new markets to you. So you haven't uh, exported uh, to those markets or attempted to expand or enter those markets. So it must be completely new. 
Thank you. Uh, we've got a question here. Do we need a strategic shift and a new market for tier three? That is right. So the strategic shift is defined, um, as I um, outlined before, into that new key market. So it can't be a strategic shift to existing markets. It has to be to a new key market that is new to you and listed in the grant guidelines. We also, uh, just to add to that, in the application form, you will be prompted to list your existing markets. And then also at the beginning of the form, you will be asked to list those new key markets that you would like to target. We suggest that you select more than one, um, given that uh, once we offer you the grant agreement, we won't be able to add more key markets that you wish to target. It has to be part of your strategic high quality plan. Thank you. Uh, we've got had a query come through regarding the twenty thousand um, dollar bank account requirement. Um, is the twenty thousand dollars on the bank account the correct account if we want to apply for one hundred and sixty thousand in eligible expenses? Do we need to show we have this money throughout the year or just on the November statement? Thank you, Rachel. Very good question, and uh, people are asking us that through the inquiry line. So, twenty thousand is the minimum capacity to spend that you need to satisfy at the time of applying. Hence the need for you to provide that uh, transaction history as well from the November month, given that that's the month when we open this round. Um, if you are successful to uh, be offered a grant agreement, we may also ask you for that evidence before we make your payment and later when we are assessing your master report. So we can ask for that uh, at any time later. Yeah, also, some of you are asking us why do you need to check that in November if the if the grant is flowing from July 25. So the requirement is that you can demonstrate your minimum capacity to spend at the time of applying, and that is why we're asking you to upload that uh, in November. You may also be asked to submit that evidence with your first master report to show us that you've got minimum capacity to spend for the for the following grant year being 26-27. This is also uh, to show your readiness to start spending um, uh, on export, uh, eligible export promotion activities from July. Uh, so we can also offer you that minimum grant payment of 20,000 uh, from the outset uh, at the start of July 25. Thank you. Um, hopefully that's just answered the question. We've just had a question come through regarding fluctuation of um balances and accounts. So hopefully your response then has just answered that query as well. Um, there's a question here regarding the detail on the marketing plan that's required. Uh, how detailed does the marketing plan have to be? Um, does that cover retrospective uh, expenses? So to answer the second part of the question, no, it should not cover and must not cover the retrospective expenses when you're applying for in round four. This is for you what you're planning to do in 25, 26 and 26, 27. So we're not offering uh, funding for 24, 25 in round four of the program. So just to quickly jump in, mm -hmm. in the plan to market section where you are asked to provide detailed um, responses and so forth, you have a character limit of 3,000 um, characters in there, okay, which is approximately about 500 words. Um, so the more detail you have, the better um, our grants officers will be able to understand what your plan to market is and your responses to that. Um, so it's a significant amount of characters that are allowed in there to provide us with those um, unique and detailed um, responses. Yeah. So because the requirement is to have a high quality uh, plan to market, high quality means you have uh, sufficiently answered all questions in the plan to market, provided that information to us in each of the questions and have strategically thought about how you will expand into that new key market um, and promote your eligible products. So please uh, spend time in writing that. As Melissa has outlined, the exemplar plan to markets are published. Uh, the sample application form is published as well on our uh, website for you to start preparing those answers and then uploading to the online form. Should you uh, provide high level responses or um, that you know we can assess, then we will deem that application incomplete and therefore you cannot be successful. Thanks, Nema. Uh, we've just had a question here regarding the differences between tier two or tier three. What if you are exporting to new markets and existing markets? Do you go for tier two or tier three? So could you maybe just clarify the differences between those two tiers. 
So T2 is for existing exporters who are wishing to expand within their existing export markets. T3 is for existing exporters who are wishing to diversify uh, and uh, make a strategic shift into the new key markets. So that's the key distinction. You cannot combine the two. You must choose one of the two when you are preparing your application. That is your business decision. Are you ready to expand or do you wish to uh, expand within the existing markets? Or are you ready to diversify and try something new and actually um, have you prepared for that? So this is your business decision. But these are two distinct T's that you need to think about. What your exporting journey at the moment, what does best suit your business at this point in time? Uh, Mel, maybe this one's for you. Um, there's just a question of where are you prompted to list the existing markets? As a tier three applicant, okay, you will be prompted to provide us with your existing markets in the export earnings table. So the section where we ask you to provide us with your latest ex uh, your two latest export sales invoices and so forth, there's a table there that you need to actually tell us where you've um, exported to. Okay, so those markets that are listed in that export earnings table cannot be the same as those ones that you've put down as where you're intending to promote to. Okay, as a tier three applicant. So tier three applicant, You've got, you're intending to promote to these new key markets to diversify and so forth. Um, and then you've got your existing markets in the table where you're going to give us a breakdown of your top 10 markets where you've exported and give us your export earnings details. Thanks, Mel. And um, we just had a query come through. Can you lodge your application from overseas? So with MyGov ID, um, there are... We, it's a question that you probably need to really direct through to the ATO due to the MyGov ID app and the way that it works. Um, we have had instances where people have had difficulty using the MyGov ID app overseas, um, but it's more of a question that you just need to clarify and just double check with your ATO office how that app actually um, works yep. while you're overseas. Unfortunately, we can't provide that advice because it's not a not an app that we own um, and so forth. And that's one of the key things that you need to have um, ready with you when you are applying for the Yeah, for security reasons, they may be blocking you to yeah. access that. So please check. Thanks, ma'am. I'm, I'm going to combine the next one. We've had quite a few queries come in in regards to the new markets, um, mm -hmm. as in whether there has been passive sales um, and what the time frame is for any previous sales to the markets. Um, and, and the clarification on that, if you just wouldn't mind going through that again, please. Thank you, Rachel. That question got raised also yesterday in one of the webinars. Um, passive sales, so small sales, any sales of those markets make you an exporter to that market. So that market is not a new, new to you. Uh, so uh, if you have already tapped into that market and started exporting, uh, regardless of how small or large that, that export invoice would have been, uh, you are an exporter to that market. So unfortunately, you cannot list that market as a new key market to you. Um, so please list it maybe as an existing market if you wish to, again, um, uh, apply in T2, but not in T3. Thank you. And, and could you just clarify if there's a time frame, just to just to be clear that there's there's no time frame. It's at any point for existing so, sales uh, in the market. I'm asking you for export sale invoices um, uh, for two export to, to demonstrate that you're exporting for this year. Um, at least two export sale invoices in, during the course of 23, 24 financial year, with one invoice being within the 18 months from applying. However, you will know what is. Uh, your market, what, what is your existing market and what is not. So it, so we wouldn't be um, going, we, we obviously have access to, if you're existing grantee, access to see what you have applied for, where where did you go in the past if you applied in EMDG. We also have other ways to check that. So we can also audit any claims in EMDG if you're successful. So we really um, are hoping that you will be, to, you know, providing correct and accurate information and making those declarations that all information that you give to Austria is true and accurate. So um, while we're not stipulating a time frame, we're asking you for specific uh, export sales invoices that it, it is outlined in the guidelines and in the form. 
Thanks for that clarification, Numa. Um, we've got a question specific to one of the questions on the application template instructions, Mel. Um, it's for question 35. The response to the question needs to align with the below planned expenditure table. And then at question 39, how does this reconcile with the total eligible expenditure per financial year? Cannot be more than double the, ma the maximum grant amount. Okay, so I believe so it's in the plan expenditure table. So the plan expenditure. Okay, so the plan to market, in your plan to market section, okay, you will be providing us with information about how, you know, you're planning on doing certain things and so forth. Um, you know, you might pop, pop in there, you know, I'm going to be going to XYZ trade show in the United States of America. Um, and then what basically that means is down in your planned expenditure table, we need to see that correlation. So there is going to be some type of planned expenditure for those trade fairs and promotional events that you might be attending, okay, or soliciting business overseas, okay? So that's where the, that correlation <laughs> needs to exist. Mm. That is right. So um, the expenditure table is part of the actual plan to market Correct. section of yeah. the application yeah. form. So if you think if you're planning to do something, uh, see this as a project for yourself, a strategic exporting plan that you, that you wish to undertake over the course of those two years for round four, and you have a budget for it. So we need to have that clear correlation that if you would like to engage an overseas representative in that new key market, you need to describe that in the description mm -hmm. of your plan to market so we can see that connection there. We will ask you similar questions if you're successful later in the milestone report. Have you done those activities so we can actually correlate it again? The plan to market questions are already detailed, so we will be asking you what are you doing now? And what are you doing new and different? And what is your strategic shift actually uh, into those new key markets that you are selecting? So it is a strategy in itself and everything is connected. So we will be uh, reviewing your application in its entirety. Yeah. Thank you. Um, in terms of financial documents, do we need to have our tax account signature on it? Sorry, tax accountant's signature on it. If you have. Um, you absolutely can upload, but that is not a strict requirement. Thank you. Uh, can we use invoices to New Zealand as evidence of export sales? Yes, you can. So if you have exported before to New Zealand, absolutely yes, but New Zealand is excluded from promoting to New Zealand as part of EMDG funding. So because um, that is excluded in the EMDG rules, but you, if you have exported, that could be evidence of exporting. Uh, thank you. Mel, there's a, there's a message here regarding someone getting an error message when logging into EMDG. You do not have access to this page or resource. Um, and then if you believe there's an error, please contact a phone number. Do you know that would be, would that be an ATO issue or? If it's um, occurred once you've pressed um, the digital identity button, it's most likely an ATO issue and there's an issue with the connection between um, in that API or that um, section. So just refresh, try it again, okay? Another thing that we highly recommend is that you clear your ca cache um, and make sure that everything's cleared off that cache and try that again. Great, thank you. I'm just conscious of time and I know we're getting very... Tight. There are a few more questions here regarding uh, key markets and, and eligibility in previous sales, which I think we have gone through. Um, there's a question here regarding some banks provide a transaction report limited to a downloaded list of debits and credits for the period and no other identifying information. Is this going to be suitable for your purposes? Unfortunately not, because we have to identify who that account belongs to. It has to be the name of the applicant entity, so we can easily correlate and, and assess that. If it is just a list of transaction history, then um, it's just numbers that we can't actually assign to anything. So please make sure that your bank statement is official from your bank and your transaction history is from your bank, that we can see the name and the name of the bank, obviously, as well. And we'll also... Um be not accepting screenshots either. Um, mm -hmm. And if it's a screenshot that's been converted into a PDF, it's easily identifiable that that's actually occurred. So make sure it's a PDF um, document that's been downloaded mm -hmm. um, and uploaded into the online application file. Thank you. Uh, getting close to time, so I might just try and do maybe one or maybe two more questions. Um, 
Could you clarify the time frame, please? It seems to cover 18 months anyway. Um, I believe this is in regards to export sales and export previous export sales invoices. Provide two export sale invoices over the course of 23-24 financial year with one being within 18 months of the application. Yeah, so obviously we're opening in November. So you have provided, if you have exported in 23-24 and you also are exporting and got a sales invoice in July or August this calendar year, 24, that is okay. So we would accept that. Thank you. Um, there's a question here regarding the BAS statements as well. Will a BAS from 23-24 and the latest BAS for quarter, first quarter 24-25 be accepted even though they are not from the financial year 22-23? The tax compliance? Or? Yeah, tax compliance. So the tax compliance is for the two income years preceding to application. So that's 22-23, 22-24. The rules and the guidelines also ask you to remain tax compliant in this calendar year and this financial year. So we're actually asking you to be compliant in the two income years, which is 22-23 and 22-24. So we can't mix and match. You have to show us compliance in those two income years. Later, if you're successful to receive a grant agreement, we can also seek uh, to see if you continue to be tax compliant in this financial year. And later, during the grant agreement term, we can uh, seek that compliance evidence as well. But at the time for applying, we need to see in the previous two income years that you were tax compliant. Please seek advice from ATO what makes you tax compliant and what sort of evidence you can provide to Austrac to demonstrate that. Thank you. Do we have time for one more question or are we out of yeah, time? Yeah, happy to. One more question. Okay. Is an overseas trade show expense regarded as an el el eligible expense? Yes, that is easy. Also, refer to the grant guidelines for all eligible expenditure guidance. Uh, there are some uh, minor limits and changes that we have made. From round four, for example, free samples have got a limit of up to 15,000 for a financial year. Also, your airfares can only be reimbursed after the economy class airfares. So when you're booking your airfares, you must show um, the, the equivalent of economy if you're paying for a higher airfare class. That is all explained in the guidelines. We have also published the templates of the grant agreements that will be issued to, su to successful applicants and the master reports are being finalised that also will be available very shortly uh, on the um, Austria website for you to see if you're successful what you will need to report on. I would also like, just in closing uh, on this slide, you will see the various channels um, that we do have to provide uh, you uh, to, to respond to your inquiries if they come through. Again, please visit our website. Also, uh, check out our YouTube channel where these webinars will be published as well. Um, and when we open to applications next week, we open into representative bodies on the 6th of November. We'll uh, extend the opening hours of our EMBG help desk from 6 a.m. in the morning to um, no, 6, 7 a.m. in the morning to 9 p.m. Uh, in the evening um, to support any uh, inquiries that you may have as you are uh, applying uh, for EMBG. I will close this webinar today and thank you for your time uh, and all of those wonderful questions. Uh, I hope we have answered most of them. And I thank Melissa and all my team in supporting to deliver four webinars uh, yesterday and today and the previous webinars on eligibility requirements. Please check them out on our YouTube channel and we wish you all the best in um, over the next coming weeks in as you apply for EMBG. Thank you.